What's up, Diary Gang? It's your girl, Creole Kisses, coming back with the latest in urban hip hop. Let's get right into the Nipsey Hustle trial. According to reports, it was an emotional trial on Thursday. There were a couple of witnesses that fought back tears while recounting the fatal shooting. I want to get into what the witnesses had to say on the stand. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and play what Black Sam, who is Nipsey Hussle's brother, had to say regarding the trial. There are many who have questioned why the family is not there, and he did answer that. So let me go ahead and play that for you guys, then I'll be back and we'll go ahead and go over what was said at the trial last Thursday. Check this out. Excuse me. We don't really tap too much into that. I got a lawyer just coming, kind of sending me the feedback so I can stay stay on, on top of what's happening day to day. And my mother, my grandmother, you know, will ask me questions or whatever, so I'll give them the feedback. Family good, thank God. Uh, my niece getting big, my nephew's getting big. You know, their mother's doing good, so thank God, man. Missing bro, but just understanding that uh, you gotta just keep keep kind of moving forward for the family, for his kids, and um, just really it's just step by step, day by day. The family has decided to stay away from the courtroom as Nipsey's murder is laid bare in graphic detail. So hopefully that clears all the questions that you all have about why the family's not there. They have their reasons. So let's move on with the case on Thursday. So they did speak to uh, Carrie Lathan and Cowboy. Let's start with Cowboy. So. Uh, Cowboy took the stand and he said he didn't think anything was out of the ordinary when Eric Holder pulled up in the passenger seat of a car just minutes after his conversation with Nipsey. But Cowboy also told the court that he remembered hearing Nipsey mutter under his breath, I wonder how this is going to unfold as he saw Holder approach. So Jansen, who's a public defender, scrutinized after pointing out that Cowboy failed to mention the detail in his grand jury testimony and under direct examination by the prosecution the day before. Cowboy also mentioned that although Nipsey grew up in the same neighborhood as Eric Holder, he was no longer involved in gang activity at the time of his death and that Nipsey was actually helping to revitalize his hometown community. And Cowboy also appeared to get emotional when one of the attorneys asked if he felt any guilt around Hustle's death. And Cowboy said, I just feel regret that I left his side. And he said this with tears. I should have never left his side. I did not see this coming. No way, no how. After Cowboy left the stand, they brought on two additional witnesses. Christian Johnson, who was in Masterburger during the time he was an electrician. Also, Danae Wright. She's a mother who was in the parking lot after having brought her kids to just meet Nipsey that day. Johnson testified he heard several gunshots while he was waiting for his food. Security footage played in the court showing him ducking for cover as people fled the scene. He said, it still shakes me up. I dream about it every night. As he began to cry, he said, I walked outside and I saw Nipsey laying there. He recounted the scene and broke down into full sobs and the judge issued a break to allow him to compose himself. Prosecutors played additional surveillance footage in court which showed Wright, Danae Wright, parking her car in the lot moments before the shooting. She told the jury that she was sitting in her car with her children in the back seat watching Nipsey take a picture with some of her friends. Moments later, video showed the shooting unfold. Several bystanders began running throughout the parking lot and Wright jumped out of her car, ran away, then ran back to the vehicle amid the chaos. At some point, she sounded choked up. She testified that she was trying to wake her kids up after she heard the shooting. So in the afternoon, they saw Kerry Lathan. He is one of the gentlemen that was injured in the shooting. He got shot. He didn't want to really testify in the case. Lathan seemed to dodge questions from both attorneys and frequently said he could not recall parts of his previous grand jury testimony citing an unrelated stroke that occurred after the shooting that made it difficult to organize his thoughts. He said, I don't know nothing. I don't see nothing. Lathan said as he responded to McKinney. 
Lathan told the jury that his nephew had driven him to Hustle store on that day of the shooting so that Lathan could thank the rapper for some clothes he had given him. The two men were talking outside of the store when the shooting occurred. As the gunfire rang out, Carrie Lathan said he tried to run away but only made it about two steps before he fell to the ground and was unable to move. Having been shot in the mid-back, Lathan said he didn't see the shooter, whom he said came from behind him, but he did remember witnessing gunfire amid the chaos. He told the jury that the bullet from that day is still inside of him. Carrie Lathan's slow going testimony prompted several long sidebars between the judge and both lawyers. So they really didn't get much out of Carrie Lathan. He wasn't willing to cooperate at all. And that was basically it for day two of the trial. They will resume on Monday, this upcoming Monday. I will get more information. As soon as I get that, of course, I'm going to share it with you all. I appreciate you taking the time out to listen and to keep up with this case. If you have questions, thoughts, leave them at the bottom. Thank you for listening. You guys take care, be safe, and I will talk to y'all later. Peace out. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way you are alerted every time I upload the latest hip hop topics. And don't forget to share the video.